Hello, and welcome to my tutorial on how to use the Unity UI system. We'll explore the new features and options by building a simple calculator that will respond to different display dimensions. This tutorial assumes a reasonable familiarity with Unity and C Sharp. The system I'll illustrate will work for any platform, but for our purposes, we'll select the desktop platform. At the end of this tutorial series, I'll show you the calculator running on multiple platforms. If you wish, you can download the finished project from GitHub at github.com slash cwgtech slash uicalc. Let's get started by creating a new project in Unity. Unity should default to PC, Mac, and Linux platform, but check by opening the build settings dialog. If it's not set, then click on it and then switch platform. Our goal here is to recreate a calculator that looks similar to the standard Mac OS calculator, but it will be resizable and will adjust the width of the buttons to fill the screen or window. We're going to achieve this by using nested layout groups to keep all the objects relative to each other while adjusting their size automatically. As with my other tutorials, create a few folders in the project view to keep things organized. For this tutorial, we'll need a prefab folder, a scenes folder, and a scripts folder. Set the main camera to render a black background. That will provide a backdrop for our UI. Select the main camera, set the background to black, and then set the clear flags to solid color. Now, in the hierarchy view, create a blank UI canvas. Click Create UI Canvas. Highlight the canvas object, and in the canvas script, click the Pixel Perfect checkbox. Now, select the canvas scalar script and change the UI scale mode to Scale with Screen Size. Slide the match slider fully to the right, or type 1 in the text box. Enter 1000 into the Y value for reference resolution. With these changes, the UI system will constantly match the height of the screen, but as far as the UI elements are concerned, the screen is always 1000 pixels tall, irrespective of the actual screen height. We'll now create the UI objects that the user will see and interact with. First, create an empty game object under our canvas and rename it to Main Holder. Adjust the rec transform so it stretches horizontally and vertically to match its parents while holding the Alt key, Option on Mac. Add the vertical layout group script to this object by clicking on Add Component, then Layout, then Vertical Layout Group. This will lay out all this object's children vertically, but first we need to adjust the checkboxes. For both rows, make sure width is checked and height is clear. We want this control to adjust the width of each child but each child to control its own height. We're going to have two regions for our calculator, a row that will hold a digit display and another row that will hold all the user control buttons. These rows will manage their own height, but have their width match that of the display. Add an image to the main holder by right-clicking on main holder, click UI and then image. Set this image's height to 100 and its color to dark gray, 353535FF. Rename the image object to digit strip. Create a text object as a child of digit strip by right clicking on the digit strip object, then click UI and then text. Rename this object to digits. Create another text object as a child of digit strip and rename it as operator. Select digits and adjust its anchors to stretch horizontal and vertical while holding the Alt key or Option on Mac. Manually set the left margin to 10 and the right margin to 40. Set the default text to 10101010, the font size to 100, and the color to white. Finally, set the paragraph alignment to right and vertical centered, and enable the best fit checkbox. This label will always fill the digit strip row and adjust its font size to allow for changes in the screen dimensions. We use the margins to inset it from the edges and also allow space for our operator text object. Highlight the operator object and adjust its anchors to stretch vertically and right aligned. This time hold down Shift and Alt, option on the Mac, when you click the anchor box. Manually set the width to 35. As with the digits text, set the font size to 100, color to white, and check the best fit checkbox. Set the default text to X and the vertical and horizontal alignments to center. This text object will display the last operator the user entered and is always to the right of the digit display. If you now adjust the display width, you can see the text objects change their size accordingly and get smaller if needed, 
but they will always stay next to each other and at the top of the screen. Add an empty child to the main holder. Make sure you have main holder highlighted and rename it button group. Set the height of the group to 625, which will make our buttons reasonably square in the default game view. With button group highlighted, add a vertical layout group script, just as we did before. Set the spacing to 5, which is the space between the rows in the group, and make sure the checkboxes are set to width for child control size and both width and height for child force expand. With button group still highlighted, create an empty game object and rename it to row parentheses 0. Set the height of the row to 125 and add a horizontal layout group script. Click Add Component, Layout, and then Horizontal Layout Group Script. Enter 5 for the spacing value, which will set the amount of space between the elements in this row, and make sure that all checkboxes for child control size and child force expand are set. Finally, adjust the child alignment to middle center. Now we are ready to start creating a button. Highlight the row parentheses 0 object and right click on it. Select UI, then left click on Button. This will create a default button under our row. Adjust the color of the button background image to a light gray, C8C8C8FF. Expand the button object in the hierarchy view and select the text object. Change the text to a lowercase c and the font size to 100. Check the best fit checkbox and make sure the min size is 1 and the max size is 100. The button will be 125 UI pixels tall and full screen width at this point. However, before we add more buttons, we will create a script for our button object. But first we need to save the scene. Click File, Save Scenes, navigate to the Scenes folder we created earlier, and name the scene as UI Calc. With the scene saved, right click on Scripts and create a new C Sharp script. Call it Calc Button. Double click it in the project view to open it in Visual Studio. Every button will need a reference to its text label, so in our script, above the start method, add the following. Public text label. Right click on text and then quick fix and select using unityengine.ui to add this using statement to the top of the file. Create a new method that will hook up to our button function. Add the following. Public void on tapped parentheses debug.log tapped plus label.text. For now, that's all the code we need, so save the file and return to Unity. After Unity updates and compiles the code, drag the calc button script onto our button object, and then drag the text object from the button onto the label reference of the calc button script. Click the plus button on the onClick list of the button script, and drag the button object into the onClick object entry. From the dropdown, select calc button on tapped. This will forward the event of the user clicking or tapping on our button to the script we just created and directly to the onTapped method. Once again, save the scenes with these modifications. At this point, you can run the scene and when you click on the button, you should see the debug output in the console window. Stop the execution and continue to add more buttons. Create a prefab object for our button by dragging the button object into the prefab folder we created earlier. You can now drag the prefab button back into the row 0 object three times, so we have a total of four buttons in our row. Make sure the buttons are in the order you created them, so using the Unity default naming, you should see button, followed by button parentheses 1, button parentheses 2, button parentheses 3. In the game and scene views, you'll see the buttons appear in our row and adjust their width as more buttons are added. With the row ready, we can duplicate it to create all the rows in our calculator. Right click on the row 0 object, and then click on Duplicate. Do this until there are five rows. You'll see the rows adjust their vertical position as you add more rows, until we've got all five created. At this point, you can adjust the size of the game view in Unity and see our buttons adjust their width to fully fill the updated size, even if the scene is not actually running. As I said at the start of this tutorial, we're going to make our calculator look similar to the Mac OS calculator utility. So with that in mind, let's set the color and content for each button. We could do this with a script at runtime, but as we never plan to change it, the editor is as good a place as any to actually do this. Start with the second button. Expand it to select the text object and add the plus minus symbol as the default text. 
To get the plus minus symbol, you'll need to enter a Unicode value, which Unity doesn't seem to support on Windows or Mac directly. Switch to Visual Studio and put the cursor at the end of the comment above our start method. If you're using Windows, hold down the Alt key and on the numeric keypad type plus 0177. Your computer may chime when you type the plus key, just ignore it. On the Mac, unless you've enabled Unicode typing, you'll use the character viewer. So tap Control Command Space to bring up the viewer, then type U plus 00B1 in the search box. Double click on the character that appears and it will be inserted into your Visual Studio text. With the Unicode character now in Visual Studio, highlight it, copy and cut it with Control X or Command X on Mac, and then switch back to Unity and paste it with Control V or Command V on Mac into the text box for the second button. Use the same procedure for other Unicode characters as we need them. Set the text to the third button to the percentage sign. For the fourth button, set the background color to orange, that's FF6526FF. Add the color to your color preset so that you'll use it for other buttons. And the text to the divide sign. On Windows, this is Alt plus 0247, and on the Mac, you'll search for the Unicode character U plus 00F7. Set the color of the text for this button to white. Expand the row 1 object and set each button's text to 7, 8, 9, and lowercase x, respectively. For the first three buttons, set their background color to white and the fourth button to orange. Expand the row 2 object and set each button's text to 4, 5, 6, and dash, or minus. Use the same color pattern as the previous row. Expand the row 3 object and set each button's text to 1, 2, 3, and plus. Again, Use the same color pattern as the previous row. Expand the final row, row 4, and set each button's text to 0, 0, dot, and equals. Use the same color pattern as before. Disable the second button of this row, and you'll see the other three buttons expand to fill the space. We'll add code to double the width of the first button later. Now you can see our calculator take shape, though it has no function yet. Save the scene and run it. When you click on a button, you'll see its caption output to the debug console. This is a good point to take a break. Next time, we'll add special code for the zero button, which is twice as wide as a normal button. We'll also add logic to make our calculator calculate. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at CWGTech or check out my blog at www.cwgtech.com. Please feel free to leave any comments or suggestions below. I hope you find this tutorial useful and informative. Join me on the next part to get the calculator actually calculating.